Home networking can be one of the most simple things in your entire setup, or one of the most complicated, and pretty much anything in between. It just depends on your use case and how many devices you have and how complicated you want it to be. Now for me, someone with a home server, a couple of PCs, a couple of laptops, and some smart home devices, I really wouldn't consider myself to be an advanced user with advanced needs, but I would say my home networking setup is more on the advanced side. So what am I running? Let's check it out. All right, before I get into it, I just wanna say really quickly, if you're a fan of the channel and a fan of these videos, please consider subscribing. It helps a lot uh, with a channel as small, as small as mine, and uh, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. It would help a bunch. And also, I'm not gonna ask you to like the video yet because you haven't really seen it, so if you like the video at the end, please consider dropping a like. Okay, home networking. There are basically four major components that go into 99.9% .9 of home networking setups. That being a modem, a router, a switch, and a wireless access point. In a lot of cases, your ISP is gonna provide you with a box that acts as basically all four of those things. And that's what I mean when I say your home networking can be one of the simplest things in your entire setup. Now, a more common setup is to take that modem provided to you by your ISP and then pair it with a more advanced router that you get on your own. Something from Netgear, Linksys, Asus, whatever. Now that router is generally gonna act as your router, your switch, and your wireless access point. In my case though, I actually have a dedicated modem, a dedicated router, a dedicated switch, and two access points. So that's what I mean when I say mine's more on the advanced side of a basic home networking setup. So let's jump into it. The modem is just a standard modem provided to me by my ISP, which is Charter Spectrum. And one quick thing, I don't have much to say about the modem, but whoever at Charter decided that the modem should only have a mobile app interface and no web GUI at all, um, what? So your modem is probably the least important part in this entire setup because it's basically there to provide a link to the internet and give you a public IP and that's kind of it. The router though is arguably the most important and my router is a NetGate SG1100. Now it's not in this box, it's actually running because I didn't want to shut off my internet. I couldn't recommend this router enough. If you are someone that wants to do more advanced things in your network, like set up customized firewalls, uh, set up a VPN, do separate VLANs, set up reverse proxies, do custom port forwarding and custom DNS stuff. This thing will do all of that. And for $179 for a dedicated router with no you know, wireless functionality and no real switch functionality, um, it is kind of pricey for that, but for the functionality it provides, it's amazing. Now, if you don't wanna do any of that advanced stuff, just go with the generic Netgear Asus Linksys router and you'll be good to go. And you'll probably stop watching the video. Now, the SG1100 is their entry level uh, router system and it's pretty much designed for small home labs, which is what I'm running. So it's perfect for me. Now mine's actually doing a bunch of stuff. Let's start out with the most basic thing, the most basic functionality that your router is gonna provide and act as your DHCP server, which is basically meaning that your router is passing out IP addresses to every device on your internet. Uh, there's a couple of more advanced things like setting up VLANs. This is where the 1100 shines and running PFSense on the 1100 makes it super, super easy to do these more advanced things. Now, I'm running two separate VLANs, one for my main network, which contains basically everything that I personally use in my home network. And then I have a separate VLAN 
that I named guest. And this is essentially for anybody that comes over and wants to use a guest network. And it houses all of my IoT devices and smart home stuff. And the reason for separating that is because I don't want to have my IoT devices or my smart home devices be able to talk to my main network stuff. So my home server, um, my NAS, any personal uh, computers that we have on the network. I don't want there to be any possibility of some security breach. And I know you guys hear a lot about in the news, you know, you know, ring devices, people talking through your ring network and certain, you know, IoT devices getting compromised. And if that happens, all of those live on a separate VLAN. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm also using PFSense to run HA proxy, which is a reverse proxy that allows me to take certain devices within my home network and expose them to the internet and the outside world. Uh, it's useful for certain things like cloud services, um, if you wanna run Plex stuff, VPNs, uh, anything you wanna to expose to the outside internet, uh, HA proxy does a very good job at that. Along with those things, PFSense is also acting as a certificate authority so that I can enable HTTPS on any devices or services that I wanna to expose to the internet. And I'm doing this with the help of Cloudflare. So uh, Cloudflare is acting as kind of a middleman between my network and the outside internet. And for some reason, they provide a bunch of useful services for free. So. I recommend going and check out Cloudflare. You can play around with it for free and do a lot of cool things with it. And on top of all that stuff, you know, you're getting your generic stuff like DHCP, port forwarding, firewalls, and a whole handful of things. I could spend hours talking about all the features of PFSense and using the uh, Netgear, Netgear, Netgate uh, SG1100, uh, but there are more components in my network that I want to get to. Okay, the switch. Uh, your switch is basically acting as a hub to all of your devices. And that is if you're running a bunch of hardline devices, meaning that you have a bunch of computers that you don't want to use Wi-Fi with, you want a hardline network cable directly into that machine, you're probably going to need a switch because most routers these days come with about four plugs and if you have four computers that's fine but if you have more and you're wanting to do more sophisticated things you're probably going to need a dedicated switch so a switch i chose is a qnap qsw m4 084c that really rolls off the tongue right and the reason i went with this is because of its price to features is probably the best you're gonna find for a small network setup like mine. It's about $300, um, but what it does do is it comes with four dedicated 10 gigabit uh, RJ45 ports. And this is perfect for me because it allows me to do everything I need and gives me a little more wiggle room if I ever wanna upgrade down the line because my server is running a 10 gig connection and my main PC is running a 10 gig connection. That's only two, so I have two left over if I ever want to expand in the future. And the switch also comes with eight dedicated one gig ports. Another solid feature of uh, this switch is that it supports VLANs. Okay, wireless access points. I have actually two dedicated wireless access points to allow Wi-Fi. My main wireless access point is a Netgear R6700 V2. It's a router I've been using for about four or so years and it runs perfectly. Now I've stripped most of the features out of it uh, before it was acting as a router switch and access point. Um, but now since I have the SG1100 and the QNAP, uh, the 6700 is basically just an access point. But why do I have two? Why do you need two access points? Well, the second one is another Netgear, but it is the AC1200. And this is a dedicated wireless access point. So why do I have two access points? Well, when I was setting up VLANs, it was convenient to have a dedicated access point act as my guest network you know, access point. 
and one access point to act as my main access point. Whenever I want to connect things within my home network to the main VLAN, I connect to the 6700 and everything on the guest VLAN goes directly through the 1200. And that is also where I've connected my home security and IoT devices. And then at the very end of the chain, we have these Asus 10 gigabit cards. Now, depending on the motherboard and devices you use, um, a lot don't really come with 10 gig built in. So you may need to purchase a dedicated 10 gig card. But I have one of these running in my main computer and I also had a second one running in my server. But since upgrading, I'll leave a link to that video above, uh, that motherboard now has dual 10 gigabit ports built in. So I actually have an extra one of these that is not being used. But this is about $100, I recommend it. I know there are cheaper ones out there, but this had a lot of good reviews in terms of using it with Windows and Linux. And I wasn't necessarily sure of my use case yet, so this is what I went with. And no real complaints, works perfectly. So that is the hardware setup that I'm using. Basically, uh, I get the internet from my ISP through the modem. My router takes that connection and does all the fancy stuff with it, like assigns IP addresses to all my devices using DHCP. It acts as a VLAN, so my network is basically split up in two separate parts. Another thing I forgot to mention is that my router is also acting and hosting a VPN so that anywhere in the world I can VPN back into my home network and access anything on my home network as if I were actually here. Then from the router, that connection goes directly to the switch where the switch takes that connection and basically makes a hard line connection to all the devices that I have hardwired. And then the access points are also making direct connections to the switch and then broadcasting that signal throughout the house. And depending on which device I'm using will determine which access point I connect to and everything's all happy. So you know what? Let's actually go take a look at everything I'm running. Okay, so this is my dedicated network room with a built-in washer dryer. And a washer dryer is probably the most important part of a network uh, physical room because if any of the devices mess up, you can just grab it, throw it in the washer, and you're good to go. Okay, actually, uh, this is my laundry room, which doubles as my network uh, hub, I guess you could say. And this is where all the magic happens. So like I said before, we have our modem, which comes from Spectrum or your ISP and just sits there and does its one thing. Um, here is the brains. This is the net gate. I can't really pull it out because of all the wiring that's so neatly tucked in behind. But this is the NetGate SG-1100, and it's pretty tiny, and it's not the size of the router in the network. It's the size of the network and the router. Okay, so the router then goes to the switch, and this is our QNAP QS4084C something, whatever. Uh, here's the switch, and that you can see all these beautiful uh, Cat 6A cables, which I don't recommend because they're a pain in the ass to crimp and uh, terminate. But that's running directly in the switch and those go up into the attic and to all the rooms in the house to give me some nice hardwired 10 gig connections. And then from there, you will see the access point. So here is the AC uh, 1200, which is the guest network. And this is the quite dusty um, 6700B2. And that's the setup. It's not really that exciting. There's a couple of lights going on and you're probably wondering what this is. This is my backup sync thing server. I'm gonna leave a link to that video above if you wanna check it out, but that backs up all my files if you're interested. And oh, there's a UPS. So I recommend having a UPS in your network set up so that when the power flickers, your entire network doesn't go down. So 
that's it. Um, it's not that exciting. The, I think the most exciting part is the washer dryer, but okay, back to the office. Okay, so not too exciting, right? I mean, that's basically my networking setup. It's just sitting in my laundry room and kind of doing its thing. And it's all just sitting there running and that's kind of it. But if anywhere in the process, I went into something that you have specific questions about, like setting up a VPN, um, setting up VLAN, setting up reverse proxies, uh, handling certificates for HTTPS, uh, let me know. I'd be more than happy to make a video going into more detail about those things, especially if there are some of you out there that really want to learn how to do this and want to utilize it in your home setup. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, leave a comment below on what your home networking setup looks like. Uh, let me know if it's more complicated or more simple than what I'm running. But if you like this video, be sure to drop a like below. If you're a fan of the channel and these types of videos, be sure to subscribe. It really helps me a ton. And I will see you guys in the next one. <laughs>